This presentation shares a practical example of the eight-step problem-solving method. This method helps all employees approach and solve problems systematically. It also unites employees in a common problem-solving method, and it gives supervisors confidence in their subordinates' problem-solving skills. The first step is to define the problem or describe the process to be improved. Here, we ask the who, what, when, and where questions. For example, let's say we receive word that a circ water pump is vibrating a lot. Well, as we ask the who, what, when, and where questions, it's clarified that the vibration is on the upper portion of the Kahe 61 circ water pump motor. Note that that statement includes our scope and boundaries. The next step is to identify performance or foundational gaps. In order to determine our gaps, we need to identify our current state and our ideal state. Then the difference will be our, our gaps. For the current state, we ask, what's going on right now? For the circ water pump motor, we want to know how bad the vibration is. Looking at the vibration data trend, we see that the amplitude trend started increasing in March and is currently at 0.5 inches per second. And we know that ideally the amplitude should be less than or equal to 0.03 inches per second. Knowing this information helps us calculate a gap of 0.47 inches per second. The next step is to determine the improvement objectives. Here we ask ourselves how much of the gap will we fix on the first pass. If this was a type of problem that could handle phases of improvement, then we could do this iteratively where each future state improves a portion of the gap. And we could do this in phases until the future state equals the ideal state. However, since this is an equipment issue, we want to be able to fix the equipment on the first pass. Therefore, our improvement objective is to reduce vibration on the upper portion of the Kahe 61 circ water pump motor from 0.5 inches per second to less than or equal to 0.03 inches per second. So once we set our improvement objectives, we then want to do root cause analysis where we'll determine the root causes for the problem or the causes of the waste. And here we ask the question why and we also investigate. For the circ water pump motor, we document our problem as high vibration. Then we ask the question, why is the upper area vibrating? Now there's many reasons why this could happen. However, for this example, we're gonna say that those causes include unbalance, looseness, bearing issues, and alignment issues. As we investigate the problem deeper, we're drawn to dig deeper into the bearing issues. So in this case, the bearing issues could include the bearing being old, the bearing being the wrong bearing, and we can also have lube oil issues. Well, as we continue to investigate, the information drives us to dig deeper into the lube oil issues. And here, lube oil problems include the wrong oil and water contamination in the oil. As we review the lube oil data, we see that the water contamination has been increasing since March and is currently at 1,000 ppm. Ideally, there should be no more than 150 ppm of water in the oil. Therefore, it's confirmed that there's water in the oil. We'll note that we need to change the oil as one of our countermeasures. But we can continue to ask, why was there water in the oil? As we investigate deeper, we find that the root cause was that the oil fill cover gasket was ripped, thereby allowing water to seep into the oil sump. So we have our root cause, and we also have the other cause of water being in the oil. Now, once we get our causes and root cause, we then go to step five, which is to develop and evaluate countermeasures. So for these two causes, we will change the oil, fix the gasket, and we'll update the procedure by adding a step for the operator to inspect the cover gasket every time they fill the motor with oil. And that will put our countermeasures in place, but we're not going to stop there. We're going to trial run the countermeasures. Then, after a certain period of time, we're going to check the countermeasures to see how they're working. For example, 
We'll review the vibration and lube oil data to see if the levels have decreased. And if the amplitudes have decreased, then we're fine. However, if the levels don't increase, then we want to adjust our countermeasures. And basically, we're going to go back to step four and look for more causes and see if we've missed any root causes or other causes. We'll then create countermeasures against those causes, and then we'll trial run the countermeasures, and then check the countermeasures. And we'll continue this cycle until we're satisfied with the solution. Once we're satisfied with the solution, we'll standardize and train the solution in order to sustain it. And the purpose for that is to ensure that the lessons learned get incorporated into the process so that the next time we run the process, we won't miss the defect. And if we do that, we've successfully completed the eight-step problem-solving method. Lastly, we want to document the entire problem-solving approach and solution on what we call an A3. Now, this can be an 11 by 17, or it can be an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper, whatever your preference is. But we use the A3 as a communication tool, allowing our whole approach and solution to be documented on one sheet of paper. So the next time you need to approach and solve a problem, consider using the eight-step problem-solving method.